everyone. My name is Della Phillips. I'm an artist as well as I'm known as the Bicycle Lady. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. What you see on my table is some watercolor markers. They're the ones with the pigment in it, not dye. And the majority of these are the Winsor Newton Pro Marker watercolor markers as well as one Albert Dewar watercolor marker. They're all very light fast, as I said before in a prior video when I was watching them out. Also, I promised that I would be doing a video showing how these markers perform with direct application to various watercolor brands and types of watercolor paper. I've been working on that and collecting up the paper. However, I just finished up one testing I thought might interest you. So. Okay, I'm bringing up an artboard in which I've taped down a B watercolor paper. It is 100% cotton, 140 pounds. I have three sections on this paper. And what I'm applying now are swatches from my Albert Dewar Scarlet Red watercolor marker. It is a pigment marker like the Windsor Newton. And I want to see how much I can get to disperse out. This first section was coated with Holbein sizing material. It was not diluted at all and allowed to thoroughly dry. And the dispersion on that is really very, very good. As expected with the B side that's uncoated, which is the center section, there's nothing on that. It's just the B paper. You do have prominent lines where the marker was applied to the paper. There is some dispersion, but the lines are prominent ghosting through that blend. Uh, presently surprised was uh, the uh, side that was coated with the sizing. There was just a hint of where the marker was directly applied. As far as the side, third side to the far right, that was coated with Daniel Smith watercolor ground. And as you see, it did go back into solution quite well, but there is still prominent definition of where the marker was applied to the paper, ghosting. Now to the side of each of the swatches, I did place a line which I'm going to use for testing after I get done with all the swatches. I'm going to test it after it sits for 15 minutes and see if I can get any of the solution to the colors to move around or blend out. Now the color I just applied swatches with is the sepia. It is notoriously known not to move on most papers. It's very difficult to get it to blend out. And you're seeing that, that there is some dispersion of the color when it's applied to the side with the sizing, almost none to the B paper that's uncoated. And now with the side that is coated with a watercolor ground, I was pleasantly surprised to see that there was further dispersion of the color. However, where the color was applied, those lines are still very prominent and not moving and ghosting through the blend. Still, I decided to go ahead and apply the lines to the side so I can do the testing after I get done and whether or not I can get any color to move after it sits for 15 minutes. Now the color I'm bringing up now to use next is a Prussian Blue from Windsor Newton. It does have a little bit of uh, issues on blending out without having the direct application line showing through or ghosting but it's definitely not near as bad as with the sepia or some other colors. So I applied the swatches to the three sections as well as the line there for, future, uh, for the testing after I get done with the swatches. Now I'm applying the clean brush with water to the side where the swatch is applied on top of the sizing material. And as you see, there's a fair amount of blending, but there's still ghosting of the application lines where the marker was applied to the paper. And as expected with the B side, a little, it did go into blending of solution, but those lines are where the marker was applied to the paper, extremely prominent. And now with the side that was coated with the ground, it's about equal, maybe just slightly worse than how much it dispersed out on the side with the sizing, but overall still a fail because the lines are quite prominent. This color I'm applying now to the different sections is the cadmium red hue. And when I tested it to disperse it out with a clean brush with water, there is a fair amount of dispersion, but you still have a ghosting or you can still see the lines where the marker was directly applied to paper as much as I tried to blend it out. 
And of course, with the side with the B paper, which is the center section, uh, there was a little bit of blending, essentially very little, and the lines were very prominent where the marker was applied to the paper. The far right side, where the watercolor ground was applied, was essentially pretty equal to in blending and how much the lines are showing through where the color was applied as was on the uh, sizing. Now I'm using rose. Rose is also known as a color that is hard to blend out and move on paper when you directly apply it. And I was pleasantly surprised to see it did blend out a fair amount of time with just a little bit of, of ghosting or where you could see where it was directly applied to paper on the section that was coated with sizing the additional sizing from Holbein. The center section, it didn't move at all, which is something to be expected. And now, trying to blend it out or disperse it out on the side that's coated with the watercolor ground, it pretty much was equal to the way it dispersed with the side that had the sizing. Overall, I say it's a fail, but I still went ahead and I trying to blend out or see how much the color will move after the paper had set for 15 minutes. I think you probably saw that there was a little interruption there. And uh, pretty much this is a fail. Now I have had, surprisingly enough, some papers where I came back even after an hour or even 24 hours not all the colors would go totally back into a blend where you went to see where it was applied. But there were a few colors that did that. And we'll see that later as I test some additional papers. I'm sure. Again, uh, I'm still going through trying to get the line that I applied and let sit for 15 minutes to see if I can get the color to blend out at all. There is a little bit of blending, but overall it is totally unacceptable. It's not satisfactory. So if you're looking to improve your paper or use uh, additional sizing that you can paint on or watercolor ground, it just doesn't work. Now I brought up some paper from Strathmore. It is the 100% Cotton 500 Imperial. I have a cold press and a hot press. I decided to use a piece of hot press and I'm going to do the same type of testing on it. And what I'm using here and put down the swatch was the Alba Dewar Scarlet Red, just as before. And we'll look at that. I put down the swatch and the testing line for later. And it's totally going back into solution. Look at that. I can even lift it off. That is so wonderful. Now some papers at least I, I saw something like that with the arches. The cold press worked a little, uh, just a hint better than the hot press, but they both work well. But here, the Strathmore is just like, it works beautifully. There doesn't seem to be a bit of difference between the hot press or cold press, and you'll see that when I, I do the, the testing with the, the cold press. Now I'm using the sepia. As we know from before, it is infamous not to blend out, and you'll see the application lines of the ghosting. Here, that is not the case. See, it totally blends out. You don't see the marks where the, the marker was applied directly to the paper. It just totally blends. It's beautiful. I was absolutely thrilled. I even went back in to see if I could lift some of the color off and whether or not there'd be any lines or anything. And it lifts. I was totally, totally thrilled. So now I'm reaching over to grab the Prussian blue. And lo and behold, I grabbed the sepia again. Whoops. Well, I already applied it to the paper, so let's just go ahead and disperse it out with some clean water, a clean brush with some clean water on it, and maybe even take it lighter, see what we can do. Since I already have it on the paper, might as well. And you see it doing that as well. And you can even lift. I'm just totally, totally thrilled with how this paper is performing with the direct application of these markers. It's just tremendous. Now, here's the Prussian Blue. I got it right this time. I did put the line to the side for uh, testing after I let it sit 15-20 minutes. Now, let's see how well this blends out or, go, uh, or disperses out. And as you can see, it will totally disperse out and leave no 
ghosting or line indication where the marker was directly applied to the paper. It will even lift out, as you can see here. And later on, when I look back, it even the color would disperse into the other color. Uh, there's bleed back, so uh, a lot of things you can do with a marker on this type of paper, or this well-performing of a paper. Here, you see I used the rose. I apologize, I did get it slightly out of order. But the rose, you know how difficult that was? Going into solution or blending out, it's dispersing out, and here you see it totally disperses out. There's no indication where the marker was directly applied to the paper, so there's no ghosting of lines where the marker was applied. It's just a beautiful color, and again, it also blended into the Prussian blue. Uh, kind of like a bleed back. So I'll I have to be aware of that, but it could also be used to my advantage, so it's great that I have that option. Here, I'm applying the cadmium red hue, and I picked up a little dot of water I dropped, and using my clean brush and water, I'm now blending it and dispersing out the color, and again, there's no ghosting, there's no indication where uh, the marker was directly applied to the paper, just like the others. It's just wonderful. Now, this final color is the Hooker Green Dark. It has sometimes a little bit of difficulty with some papers, so that's the reason why I did the test here with it. I couldn't do it before because I ran out of space. And as you see here when I apply the water, initially you do see a little bit of a line indication, but it does blend totally out. Uh, the direct Application lines totally disappear. You can even lift it off. I am totally thrilled with this paper. I consider this an absolute success. Now I did let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes, cleaning my brush, and I'm getting ready to go back in and see if those lines I let sit for 15 minutes, so that's to the side of the swatches that I blended, will blend out or go totally back into, into solution where it will not have any ghosting. Some papers it will do that, and some it won't. Here, it pretty much does. There is a slight bit of an indication with the scarlet red of where the line was. It almost totally goes back in. It's just a hint. So, that's good to know. Now, let's try the sepia. That one was a little tougher. Some of it went back into solution from the mark, but there is a fairly prominent line left that would not move. However, if you use it directly, after you apply it, you don't have any lines or ghosting or the, where it was applied showing through. So, it's good that you did the testing and know these things. But with the Prussian blue, there still was a bit of a indication of where it was applied, but then again, it sat for 15 minutes. It did go a fair amount back into a blend or solution or dispersion. So, I wasn't really totally upset but I know how to handle both those colors when I use it. The rose was similar. It did go back into solution a little bit more than the Prussian blue, which surprised me, but there is still a strong indication where the marker was applied to the paper. Now with the cat, uh, cadmium red hue, it again also went fairly well back into a blend. There's still ghosting or a line where the, the marker was applied. And then also on the hooker green, you have a similar type of result. Even with this, keep in mind I let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes. I still consider this paper a wonderful paper. It's a total success, especially since when you apply it and immediately blend it out, you have total dispersion. You can even lift it off. If you find this video helpful, enjoyable, please give it a thumbs up as well as consider subscribing. Until next time, you have a wonderful day.